Hello, hello. Good evening, Facebook. Happy Monday. And for those of you who do not know me, my name is author Indiana Tuggle. I am an author. I am a speaker. I am a life coach and I am also a writing coach and the founder of Victory Publishing Company. And what I do is I help aspiring authors turn their testimony into books for God's glory. And I do that through a my writing coaching programs and I have a couple of publishing packages also available to help those authors put their works into the earth. Well, tonight I'm coming to you. Well, first of all, Mindset Mondays is a series of lives that I want to do to really help um, those aspiring authors get the right frame of mind before they get into writing their books or as they write their books. And with this Mindset Mondays, what I'm doing is I am taking a lot of questions that I get from people that I come, tech, come in contact with on a daily basis, um, some of my former clients, and even those who I interact with on social media in regards to their questions that they have when they want to um, start writing their book. And these are first-time authors. So, um, one of the questions that I spoke about on last week, we talk about who's going to read my book. And if you watch the um, broadcast on last week, you will know that what I inform you all is that when you ask the question, who's going to read my book, that is really doubt and fear. And that is coming directly from the enemy. So we talked about how we can overcome that and begin to decree and declare a lot of positivity in our lives. Well, on tonight, and if you didn't watch last week's broadcast, shame on you, then go back on my timeline and look through and catch up on that as well. Um, well, tonight we are continuing on with that on Mindset Mondays. And tonight we are talking about where do I start? I get a lot of questions um, about that. And I was actually speaking with a friend just on yesterday. And he was telling me that he has issues on where he would start as well. So today, I'm talking about something that is really, really basic. And as a kingdom writer, even though it seems basic, it is something that we really, truly have to understand that is absolutely essential to our writing journey. Not only the journey of writing the book, but also the journey of making sure that your book is going to answer the needs of those that are coming behind you, as well as um, the that it is very essential for how you will put that book out into the atmosphere. And that thing is prayer. Many, many times we look for we look for answers to questions and we look for other people to solve things for us when truly and um, honestly, we have to get in a line of thought to get back to the one who gave us the vision, the one who gave us the dream, the one who basically told us to write the book. He is the one. God is the one who has done a miraculous thing in your life. He is the one who has brought you through the traumatic experiences that you went through. And so therefore, he is the one who will show you how to share your testimony and what your testimony will do in the earth. So tonight we are talking about prayer and how essential prayer is to your writing journal. Journal excuse me, journey. <laughs> and prayer is, stands for an acronym, P-R-A-Y-E-R. -E and if you know me, um, if you've been following me, you know that I will come up with an acronym for almost anything. <laughs> so prayer is an acronym. And tonight we're going to talk about um, how we can really begin to shape and contour our prayer life so that we can jumpstart our writing journey. Um, and that's the first thing that you have to do when you start off praying is you have to start with the P, which is praise. You have to begin to thank God for who he is in your life. And basically, gratitude shapes your attitude. Please understand that gratitude shapes your attitude. When you begin to um, walk around and praise God for who he is and what he's done in your life, you open up 
the floodgates of heaven to pour out blessings on you. You open up your communication with God. And praise should be easy, but however, sometimes in our quest for uh, better, sometimes in our um, as we go about our um, activities, as we go about um, going to work, coming home, dealing with the children, dealing with the family, sometimes we forget where God has brought us from. And we have to begin our prayer lives with thanking God for who he is and what he has done. And actually sit down and think about your past and your present. Is he not worthy to be praised? So begin to write down what has God done for you. And tonight I'm coming to you from a prayer um guide that I created just for you all on tonight. And that prayer guide is um, in your comments. And it is it's part of a digital bundle that I created that includes the prayer guide, a prayer, prayer and decree, as well as an ebook on how to start writing and outlining your book. And that bundle is only $25. So be sure to go to the um, link that is in your comments and check out that bundle. Or if you just want the prayer um, guide, you can go to the website victorypublishingcompany.com that's shown on your screen and that's also shown in the link of this broadcast and you can download this prayer guide for only $7, okay? Um, so back to um, prayer, praise. We have to start every prayer off with praising God, you know, because praise is going to bring in your worship. Praise is going to open up the atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to come in. And the Holy Spirit is what you need as your guide throughout this journey. And the P in prayer, start, excuse me, the P starts for praise and the R starts for repent. Look, before you can go into something that is holy, you have to remove anything in you that is not like God. So repenting is all about creating in you a clean heart. You are asking God to come in and clean you up from the inside out. So in order to write from a pure heart, you must be able to eliminate strongholds that may hinder you from hearing God. Because um, basically, Sin keeps us from God. The Bible tells us that nothing can keep us from the love of God, but our sin divides us from God. And when you think about repenting, begin with the three D's. And the three D's are, that I call are disobedience, distractions, and doubt. Disobedience because you know you were called to write, however, you have not made it a priority, so you've been constantly putting it off, putting it off, and putting it off. And then the distractions is because you have allowed people, places, and things to become your excuses as to why you don't have time to write. And then doubt, that is inclusive of your fear and your procrastination because why you don't really believe that you can do it. You don't believe that you can be the, right, the writer that God has called you to be. So you have a lot of doubt in you. So once you release everything that you need to repent from, ask God for forgiveness and understand and know that you are forgiven and to be, and be able to walk in that forgiveness. Now, the A in prayer at stands for ask for help. We all know that the one, number one thing that you have to remember when you are pursuing um, purpose, whether it be it be writing, whether it is to start your business, what whatever your purpose is, you have to understand that God is with you. Yes, God chose you. However, you cannot do this alone and it will not it absolutely will not work without God. The reason that you're frustrated is because you're trying to do this on your own. And frustration is a result of trying to do on your own what only God can do. So many, many, many times before we will even reach out and ask God for help, we will take on and we will try to do everything in our own power. We will exhaust all that we know to do. And then when we come to God, we're weary, we're tired, we're frustrated, we're confused, and we are just completely out of it. And it's because we assume that God knows it all. 
which he does. He knows it all. However, God will not step in until we ask him. He is a gentleman and he's not going to step into your situation until you invite him in and until you ask him for help. So um, you have to include in your prayer how what you need help from. Specifically, ask God what you need help from. Yes, he knows, but he needs for it to come out of your mouth. You have to open and open, have an open and honest communication with God when you're going on this journey towards writing. Because remember, as I said before, writing is about purity of the heart. You have to have a pure heart to go before God in your writing. Now, the why in prayer stands for you. We all know the scripture. Faith without works is dead. But guess what? You have a role to play. And I don't care how much anointing you think you have. I don't care how miraculous you think your testimony is. Your book will not and cannot write itself. And you keep putting it off using lack of knowledge and time as an excuse. It's not an excuse. That is what you are using as an excuse to prevent you from going forward. And so basically, when you are thinking about your prayer time, you are going to have to create a plan of action that includes how you are going to include time to pray and to commune with God, how you're going to include time to write. And then you're going to have to include a proactive approach to the procrastination, to the distractions when they come, because they're not going to stop just because you're praying. The enemy is not going to stop just because you have decided to say yes to God and write your book. Oh, no, the enemy is going to come at you harder. Things are going to come at you harder. And so you have to be specific. Exactly what are you going to do and stick to it? Uh, Many, many times when I talk to my clients about um, their goal setting and how to achieve a lot of their goals, one of the first thing I have them to do is analyze their time because we use time as an excuse for everything. I don't have time for this and I don't have time for that. Well, I have my clients analyze their time and I and I put time in two categories, wasted time and borrowed time. Wasted time includes time that you spend on social media, watching TV, playing games, whatever that you could be using for doing something else. And then borrowed time is time that you have in between other activities, kind of like your lunch break at work on the way to work, <laughs> you know, while you are commuting in the car or um, maybe time that you're, you're, you spent sitting at the doctor's office waiting on the doctors to call your name. Or if you are a parent, think about the time that you waste sitting while your time is in, while your, while your child is engaging in another activity. While your child is at that soccer game, what are you doing? When you're sitting over there to the side, are you just sitting there scrolling on Facebook? You could be writing. You know, are you um, so think about your time in those two aspects, wasted time and um, borrowed time. And I'm pretty sure you are going to find some time that you could spend actually writing, praying and communicating with God because you're going to have to, like I said, come up with a plan of action. Now, the E in embrace is the E in prayer is stands for embrace. You have to begin to embrace and accept that writing is a gift. This is one of the gifts that God has given you. And if you think about it, go back and read in the book of Matthew, the prayer of the talents. And you will see that whatever God has given us, every talent that he has given to us, he is expecting us. To give, to give him a return on his investment. He is expecting us to double what he has given us. So it's you might as well embrace it. And please, please, please understand that what God, your, pur- your writing is a gift. However, purpose is what God instructs you to do with your gifts. And it should not be a burden. Writing should not be a burden. 
It should be something that you do with joy that is un, that is pleasing and excellence unto the Lord. And some of us, we walk around and we continue to ask God, show me my purpose. What's my purpose? Why am I here? What do you want me to do? However, he can't show you your purpose if you refuse to use your gifts. If you refuse to exalt him in your gifts and talents, then you won't understand or clearly understand your purpose. Writing is just a tool that you are to use to make an impact in the earth. Once you begin to write, you will begin to uncover more gifts because purpose continues to expand itself. Your gifts and talents continue to expand themselves once you begin to use them. And then also part of embracing your talent is to stop speaking negatively about what God has called you to do. And this is something that hit me like a ton of bricks because I used to do it too. And it would be, you have to stop cursing in frustration what God has called blessed. God has already told you that you were going to be a blessing. God has already told you what your book is going to do in the earth. He has already called, told you what is going to be re the results of your obedience if you just trust and follow him. So why are you continuing to allow frustration to make you curse what God has said is blessed? And just simply stating, I don't have time. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. That is all considered negative talk, y'all, because God gave you the gift. He gave you the assignment. Do you not think he's not going to tell you what to do? and how to do. Hi, Trinika, how are you? But please, you guys, as you remember, as you come in, please share this broadcast because if it's not for you, it may be for someone on your timeline. And part of embracing your talent is what you value, you protect. And we have to begin to protect our gifts and our callings. And this includes eliminate negative talk and people. So you have to stop being around negative people. You have, and that includes yourself. You have to stop talking negative. So um, that's why I included a pray and prayer and decree is because I want you be to begin to decree those blessings over you. And many, many times God gave the gift to you. He gave the vision to you. Everybody in your circle is not going to understand. Everybody in your circle is not going to embrace you going after this new vision. They're not. But guess what? It's not their job to um, validate you. Now, that's a big one. And the second part of embracing is decreeing and declaring positive things. Speak daily when negative thoughts come up. Stop allowing the devil to continue to torment your mind each and every day. Sometimes I get up in the morning, I have sticky notes. Y'all have seen um, B and Mary Jane, how she has sticky notes all around her house. That's me. I have sticky notes. <laughs> I have sticky notes around my house. And I also have journals in which I write down every word that was spoken over me throughout my writing journey. Every word that God has said, either through um, people and prophets and in my quiet time, every word that he has said regarding my writing, my personal um, dreams, my personal goals, and even my healing process, I have written it down so that when things get hard, I have something to go back and refer to. OK, and we're going to talk about that um, in, a, in a few minutes. And another thing is stop seeking validation from others. I already touched on that a little bit, but nobody can validate what God has told you to do. And seeking validation from others is just like slapping God in the face, saying that his word is not good enough. And you absolutely cannot do that. Once he has called you to do a thing, you need to do it and you need to believe that he chose right. He chose you for a reason. He chose you because he wanted to use you. Now, don't get it twisted. He can choose somebody else. So don't think that because he gave you this awesome book and you've been sitting on this title for um, two years, three months, a couple years or whatever, that he can't give it to somebody else. You are going to wake up one morning and see your book, same title and all, sitting on the shelf. Okay, because 
God, just the same way God, this is flying here, the same way God spoke to you, he can speak to somebody else. So don't think that you have infinite time to put this thing out here. He will raise up somebody else with a similar testimony who is going to supply the needs of the people because your book is the answer to someone else's prayer, you guys. You have to remember that. Purpose is not selfish. Her purpose is about somebody else. It's about the kingdom. It is about others. You know, what you went through, it was about you at the time. But in order for God to use it to impact others in the earth, it's about somebody else. Hi, Susan. How are you? Wow, 25 years. And really, really, you have to understand that this is a partnership. You are in partnership with you and God. So um, you don't need validation from anybody else. And um, in this journal that I'm talking about, you can write down your own prayer, you know, and write down your own um, positive declaration that you can speak over yourself. I have several of them written down, you know, to speak. And then the last thing, the R in prayer is for remember the promise. And I just touched on it. Everybody, there is a reward for your obedience. Don't let people think that God just got us walking around here and uh, being obedient to his word, living out um, his word in the earth. And our reward is waiting for us in heaven. No, you have earthly rewards. <laughs> hey Tago, how are you? I do every day. I'm like, I look like her. But um, there is a reward, an earthly reward for your obedience. And like I said, your obedience is the answer to somebody else's prayer. And remember, the promise should be your motivation. What has God promised you concerning you in your books? The promise is your motivation. It is your encouragement. However, but your love for God and your willingness to um, to be his mouthpiece in the earth, that should be your why. OK, because things and material things, they're going to come and go, you know, and your faith is going to be tested and it's going to come to test you to see if you're going to be faithful to the promise or if you're going to be faithful to the God who gave you the promise. OK. And like I said, no matter what, you have to keep praying. You have to keep praying and you have to keep going no matter what, no matter what life throws at you. You know, um, if any of you have ever um, watched The Five Heartbeats, that's one of my favorite movies. I am a um, sing and dance kind of movie kind of girl. I don't know why. I think it's a dancer and a singer in me uh, somewhere from my childhood because I love to sing and dance. But anywho, I'll tell you about that later. But on The Five Heartbeats, you remember when Duck said that someone told him that he was going to become a great writer once he experiences more pain? And I know I'm quoting that wrong, but you know what I'm talking about. But Many, many times, the more that you go through, the more that you have to write about. Look, everything since I've been writing, everything that I have been going through since I said yes to God in 2011 has become a book. I'm so serious. I am on book number four. Um, the first book I was writing about being single because I wasn't happy and I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was sick and tired of my own self. So I was like, look here, God, what's going on with me? Why am I not happy? Show me how to be happy. That was the first book. The second book, I was still single, still not happy, but I was tired. And I was like, why do we keep listening to the world telling us what to do to prepare for marriage? God, what do you say? What do you want me to do? And that was where he showed me how to go on the road to becoming the best me, regardless of whether I get a man or not. I am My purpose of being single is to be the best me possible in every season. That was book two. Book three, I was going through a period where I lost my, um, my season of loss. And I went through, I lost my job. Then I lost my mom. Then I lost my, my house. And what happened is I was in a straight um, season of depression. I was in straight up depression. And 
that book is a 90 day devotional and it was literally god had to talk to me each and every day to pull me back up out of that depression he had to remind me of who i was he had to remind me of what he called to me, me to do he had to remind me that it was greatness in me and that this was only a season that it couldn't last forever so that book drug me up out of my pit and i wrote that book in my pit and so um and that was awaken the dream and now this fourth book i'm actually writing and i started writing it during the course of everything that was going on the last two years but i kind of stopped writing when i went into depression um but this book is about how i uncovered my faith and the lessons um, that God was teaching me as I went through each period in my life. And this is where I'm going back and I'm looking back over the past, the present, the and um, what God says about my future in this book. And it's called Finding Faith. And this is book four. So everything that I went through, I wrote about it in a book. Because God continues to pour things in me. And that is how I communicate with God. So sometimes what you don't think that when you write this book that everything is going to be peachy and creamy no 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 this is why prayer is so important it's because the attack is coming the enemy is going to try to attack you and another part of remembering the promise is write the vision write the vision of what god has said write the vision of what you want this book to do and for you and for those who read it what is the vision write the vision make it plain just like it says in the back of two and two so that they that may come upon it may run read so that they that that read it may run that's what the vision is for so that whenever you read it you can strengthen up yourself and keep running. So make sure that you write the vision. And whenever you get frustrated, whenever you get frustrated, go back and look at the vision to make sure that you're on track and to make sure that you are staying um, in communication with God and waiting for the strategy to fulfill the vision. And the last thing is to make sure that you keep a journal of every work and promise spoken over you as i said before you guys you have to keep an account for um what god has spoken over you because god responds to his words you guys he responds to his word and if you don't remember it how are you going to hold him to his promise thank you so much cousin love you um and so please remember to keep it write it down that is the beauty of being a writer that is the beauty of being a scribe words matter to us you know if i don't write it down i don't remember it <laughs> you know um if 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 you don't get me to write it down then i'm gonna forget it like like immediately within the next five minutes i'm going to forget it but i have this um gift of remembering what i wrote that's why i can sit here and i can tell you what's in every book you know, um, not word for word, but I know what's going on in every book, no matter how many I write, I know what's in every book. If somebody quote one of my, something from my book, I can tell you exactly where it is and what chapter it was in because I remember what I write. And that is honoring God when you remember the word that he has spoken over you. That is your form of worship. God responds to his word. So keep a journal of every word and every promise spoken over you. Yes, Susan, yes. <laughs> Make sure you keep that journal. It's going to be essential, you guys, because it's going to get tough. It really is. It's going to get tough. The enemy is going to come at you. Look, he don't care nothing about you. He will let you go on your happy way as long as you are um not doing what god told you to do the minute that you say yes and you decide that you are going to do what god told you to do attack you are now in warfare you know so um prayer is very very important because and now i'm just going over with you the importance of prayer and it is because the holy spirit will be your god 
He will give you what to write and he will give you how to write. And that that will meet the needs of the people that you are called to serve. So again, when you're asking who's going to read my book, when you're asking where to start, that just shows me that your prayer life is lacking. Beef it up. You know, go harder, go in deeper, you know, and sometimes we don't know what to pray for because we're frustrated and the cares of the world is taking over. And I understand that. But like I said, cut you on some music, some gospel music and start with worship. That's why you have to start with praise, because a heart of gratitude welcomes the Holy Spirit. And when you lose yourself in praise, the prayer is going to come out and you're going to begin to pray in your heavenly language and you're going to usher in what you need from God. And your words will be like a sweet aroma to his ear. And then another thing is pray for other people. A lot of times we can see other people mess better than we can see our own. And the Bible says what you do for something, what, for, what you do for someone else, somebody he's uh, somebody else would do for you, what God would do for you. So when you're praying for somebody else, guess what? Somebody put, God put you on somebody else's heart to be praying for you too. So don't think that because you're spending your time praying for other people that your needs are going unmet. No, 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 no. Seek ye first the kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. So while, while you're praying for somebody else, please believe somebody is praying for you. And please believe that God sees you and he will meet your needs as well because you are petitioning the throne on the on behalf of somebody else. He will not let you go with lack. OK, um, so if you're experiencing any type of writer's block, if you're experiencing any type of frustration, it's because your prayer life needs to be beefed up. There's no better way that I can say it. Um, prayer creates the atmosphere that you need to induce your writing. It really does. Um, the 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 short prayer that you say on the way to work. And the reason I can see, say this is because I've done it sometimes, too. But many times we get in a rush, you get up late and you want to run up the run out the door. And you say, oh, Lord, protect me as I as I'm on my way to work and protect my kids and my household and let us come back safe, safe, safe through all hurt, harm and danger. That's a simple. That's basic. That's kind of like your child saying, now I lay me down to sleep before they go to bed. Mm -mm. You on meet now. It's time for you to beef up your prayer life. You're going to really have to get into a deep relationship with God. And that means you're going to have to incorporate the word. Search and, and research in the word. All you have to do is, if you don't know where to start in the Bible, look in the concordance. Many, many times when I'm in my prayer time and, I, and God gives me a new book, because whenever God gives me a new book to write, he always gives me the, sub, the title. He gives me the title first and then the, and the subject. <clears throat> and then I go into prayer and I ask him what he wants me to talk about. And no, not what he wants me to talk about, where he wants me to study in the Bible to gain revelation for the book. And it never fails me. Um, the first book he had me to study um, Ephesians, Romans and the book of John. The second book, um, I believe I was in um, some part of Matthew um, for the second book and a little bit more of Ephesians. Um, then the third book with the devotional, I would, the devotional was a little bit sporadic because it had, it was, I was talking about different subject matters in that book as it pertains to, um, someone in pursuit of purpose. So that one was a little bit more sporadic, but it was still based off of my just daily quiet time with the Lord. And every day I would just wake up and look in the concordance. Okay. I'm depressed today. What does the Bible say about about depression. <laughs> okay, today I need some encouragement. Today I need some confidence. So what does the word say about that? And that's how I did on that book. But in finding faith, God led me to study the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to study the life of Jesus. And um, as he um proceeded to walk out his purpose with the Holy Spirit as his God, because that is what faith is. Okay. Faith is all about belief and trust in God. So, um, 
God had, he would lead me to um, everywhere he wanted me to study in order to get the revelation that he needed me to get for each and every one of my books. And he will do that for you, but you have to make time for him. Um, for me, 6 a.m. is generally my time. I used to get up at 6 a.m. and pray and study um, with God before going to work. I will admit I have been slacking. <laughs> Sometimes I, I do it when I come home. I sit and I meditate. Sometimes I do it before I go to bed. But the key is to set a time and meet God there because he is going to be waiting on you. When I get up in the morning, I usually wake up 10 minutes before the alarm go off. And that is God telling me, get up, I'm waiting. You know, so um, when you um, make a vow to meet God at a set time of the day, he is waiting for you. You know, so stick to your schedule, you know, and prayer also eliminates your selfish and your impure motives. Many, many of us go into this writing journey because we want to become best selling authors or um, we want to. Um, we're looking for all of this money and all of this fame. And I'm not saying that's everybody's point of view. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that, because when you write, you want your efforts to be um, rewarded. So I'm not saying that wanting to be a best selling author and even wanting to um, make the money is a bad thing. But what I'm saying is you have to have the heart of God to have the heart for the people that your book is meant to impact and transform. Because remember, kingdom writing is about transformation and impact. It is about the lives that you're going to reach. And that is where the reward is that it is in the nations that you will touch. Yes, Elizabeth, every night before bed. Many times that is becoming my new prayer time. Um, and like I said, prayer is going to be your weapon of warfare because the enemy knows who you are. And he's not just going to stand by and let you have it. He's not just going to step out the way and say, oh, she doing what God called her to do. I'm just going to let her be lies. He going to come at you. He gonna come. So you have to pray over not only yourself, over your um, family, over your, um, your, um, your house, over your children, over anybody connected to you. Pray for them because you want to cover them as well, because he, the enemy will try to get to anybody to get to you that's going to keep you from um, doing what God called you to do. Um, and also in all of your praying and all of your meditating, make sure you include time to listen. <laughs> right. You know, um, make sure that you include time to listen. Don't spend all your time talking. Let God talk back. He will talk back. Um, if you don't include time to listen, you'll end up being like me and wondering why on your way to work, God is talking. And um, you can't pull over, you can't pull out a pen and write down what he says. So you're gonna have to try to remember when you get to a uh, red light <laughs> or when you finally make it to work, you're gonna try to remember what he said. So um, make sure that um, you include time for him to talk back. My motto is if you're gonna spend 30 minutes in prayer and meditation, you need to spend 15 minutes listening. You know, um, and sometimes it doesn't mean just because you don't have a whole hour to listen doesn't mean that you are not praying right. It just means that you have to continue that thought and that meditation throughout your day. If you haven't heard from um, God when you finish praying in the morning or at night, be prepared to have a journal with you at work because he going to speak. OK, be prepared to have a journal with you on your nightstand. I sleep with mine in my bed because I'm single. Ain't nobody laying right there. So my journal is in my bed. And nine times out of 10, when I get through praying at nine, 10 o'clock at night and get ready to go to sleep, guess what? The Lord going to wake me up at 2 a.m. Because he got something to say. And I get on up and I write it down and I go back to sleep because you um, when you're first beginning to write, writing is creative. You know, it has to have the freedom to um, to be sporadic and the freedom to be wild. So 2 a.m., 5 a.m. on the way to work, at work, in the shower, 
the shower used to be my thing. God used to always talk to me in the shower. Uh, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I'm calm. Maybe because I'm listening. I don't know why. But um, wherever he would say something, you know, that would um, cause me to jump out the shower. I mean, my first book, he gave me the whole book in the shower. The um, the title and all eight chapters that are in the book, God gave me that in the shower. So um, he will speak whenever you are receptive to listening. And that is when your mind is clear and you are focused on him. Um, and like I said before, make sure that you create the atmosphere um, and uh, for worship, which means if you have to um, create, cut you some music on and walk around the house singing and dance and do what you got to do to, excuse me, create that atmosphere for worship. And um, <laughs> what I have just um, did with you all or went through is the um, the Start Right Digital Bundle. And, and that is what's in your comments. If you've seen the comment that I have in your broadcast, and that is my digital bundle that includes the prayer guide that I just went through. It also includes a um, pray and decree um, worksheet, shoot, shoot, uh, worksheet that I'm going to um, use when we get ready to get out of here. We're going to pray with that. And then it also includes my ebook entitled Off to, Off to a Right Start. And that ebook is a um, a step-by-step -step guide to help you write out your outline and actually begin to write out the chapters in your book. And you can grab your um your bundle for only $25 today is on special. The um, prayer guide itself is $7. The pray and decree is free. So you can get that off my website for free. But the prayer guide is $7. And the start right bundle by its the um, off to a right start ebook is $25 by itself. So you're going to get all three of them for just $25 um, um, for um, this week. I believe I'm going to keep it on for maybe this week and maybe next week because I want you to get started on um, your prayer life so that you can beef up your prayer life so that you can actually have an impactful book. And also, um, please, please know that it's not too late for you to join the um, Kingdom Writers Challenge. If you are still having trouble um, writing, if you are still having trouble getting started, if you are still having trouble figuring out um, what to say and how to um, compile your life stories together or whatever it is or whatever topic that you want to talk about, if you are still having trouble um, doing that, don't allow procrastination to keep you from doing the will of the Lord. Please, please, please sign up for this Kingdom Writers Challenge. In this challenge, we're going to be talking about how to find your reader. Uh, we're going to talk about how to find your voice because we all have a different author voice. We're going to talk about how to hear from God. And we're going to also talk about how to write out your outline and craft your story using my proven SRA method. That F SRA method is the method that I use to write each and every last one of my books. OK, um, and it is a pattern that I follow. I didn't even recognize I, <laughs> I followed this pattern until I began um, coaching other writers and I, writers and I like, oh, I do follow a kind of a set pattern, so to speak, um, when I'm writing. And this challenge is only one hundred and forty seven dollars. That is the introductory price. Um, when I do this challenge again, which may be later in the year or um, at the beginning of the year, it will not be at that price again. So um, go ahead and jump in that challenge if that sounds like you, if that's what you are wanting to do. Um, now, um, the. Pray and decree is a prayer that I kind of that I put together for first time um, writers, for first time um, authors to kind of help you guys to um, begin to pray and to begin to um, think about what it is that you need to decree for. And I'm trying to find it on my drive so that um, we can pray it as we go out. And you guys, if you have any, um,
Okay, there I am. My bad. Um, but the pray and decree is goes through everything that we just talked about. It talks, it gives you a little bit about praising, it gives a little bit about uh repenting, it gives a little bit, bit about asking for help, a little bit about what you're going to do and how to embrace your gift, and also how to remember the promise. Um, so if there are no questions, there are no concerns, then I'm gonna pray us out of here. Hi, Susan. My um, apologies. The challenge is $147. The um, pray and decree um, that was on your screen, that one is set uh, free. So you can get that one on my website and I'll put the website up. <clears throat> Well, it's already on your screen, victorypublishingcode.com, and you just click on my store, and you can go to the store and um, download your pray and decree. Now, the Start Right bundle is $25, and that is, um, the link is in the comments already. I put that in the comments before we started this broadcast. Um, so thank you so much, Susan, for asking that question. If there are any more questions, we are going to get into some prayer before we get up out of here so that you all can go about your day. And again, forgive me for all of the clicking and not having my, having my files ready for you all because I had the other file up, but I did not have the decree because I thought I would be able to read it from the screen, but it's only a jpeg and it's that writing is a little bit too little but i have it now so um if there are any more questions and remember if you're um, watching the replay if you ever have any questions please just leave them in the comments and i will come back and answer your question as well um so um no more questions so we're going to get into some prayer and we're going to get out of here at the end of the prayer there are going to be a couple of decree and declare um words that i use for myself and decree some positivity in my life so feel free to use them um this prayer you can download and you can use it every day if that's what you want to do so that you can reignite and activate your um power to begin your writing journey hello 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 you got disconnected i'm sorry <laughs> um i was playing around with the screen that's probably why um it disconnected you somehow my apologies but um, we're about to pray. Do you have any more questions before I um, start praying? <clears throat> okay, well, if you type your question in while I'm praying, then um, no problem. I will um, answer the question before we leave. Um, so, um, Heavenly Father, thank you for choosing me my life, my story, and my journey as a beacon of hope for your people. Forgive me for allowing people, places, and things to distract me. I know that my assignment is not to be taken lightly and place it in high priority in my life. Help me to set aside time daily to commune with you and receive revelation regarding the needs of your people. If there are any areas in my life that are not healed or malice in my heart toward those who have wronged me, I ask that you reveal, restore, and deliver those broken places. Help me, God, to forgive myself and others that I may write from a place of purity and compassion. Holy Spirit, as you lead and guide me in my writing, reveal unto me creative strategies, ideas, and solutions to meet the needs of your hurting people. I accept the call on my life to be a voice out of the darkness for your people and a living example of your love and compassion. I surrender to your will and with my gift, I will exalt thee. I bind the enemy now that tries to come against me with writer's block, procrastination, fear, and comparison to others. I cancel every attack against my mind, finances, health, friends, and loved ones meant to distract and deter me from your presence. I recognize 
I cannot do this without you and humbly submit to your authority. Speak in me and through me. As I go on this journey, teach me how to protect this scribal anointing and help me to be transparent that others will see you in me. Thank you for your divine connections. Give me keen discernment that I may know who is a helper and who is a hindrance and give me the strength to walk away. I decree and declare that I am your mouthpiece. I hear and speak from the heart of God. My life matters. My story will transform lives and heal nations and generations to come. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, yes, that prayer that I just uh, walked, um, just read to you all, that is a free download and it is on my website. Can you see it's victorypublishing.co. Okay, if you go to victorypublishingcode.com and click on my store, then you will see that prayer and you can download it and you can read that prayer every morning or every night to kind of jumpstart your prayer. Um, what I do is I have another decree that I pray over my business that I got from a friend. And I usually will start with that. And that kind of opens up the lines of communication to allow me to keep going because sometimes you don't know where to start, <laughs> you know? So um, feel free to download that prayer and use it to start off your um, daily prayer with the Lord. Um, it is something that I created that, um, that God gave me for you guys to start um, opening up the lines of communication between you and him. So um, I hope that you all were blessed by tonight. Um, I hope that um, what anything that I've said or spoken gives you encouragement and it gives you motivation to continue on your writing journey. And I thank you all so much for joining me. Please remember to share this broadcast. Please also remember to um, download your prayer, you guys, because prayer is going to be very, very much essential. <laughs> to this process. Again, if I can't reiterate this enough, even if you never utilize my services, even if you never um, follow me again, you're going to need some prayer. Okay. You are going to need God. Um, if you start with prayer, if you are sincere in your prayer, if you are consistent with your prayer, he will tell you what to write, you guys. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be um, like your favorite author. It doesn't have to be that way. Um, when I first started, I wanted to write like Joyce Myers. That's my favorite author. <laughs> and I wanted to write um, like her. And I kind of was reading a lot of her books. And the first thing that God had me to do was to stop reading her books. He was like, stop, because you're continuing to compare yourself to her. And I want you to be Indiana Tuggle. I already got a Joyce Myers. I need you to be Indiana Tubble. You know, um, now I can enjoy reading her because I love her. Um, but then I had to stop for a season so that I could stop comparing myself to her. And a lot of times that's what we have to do. We have to stop um, following other people. We have to stop um, listening to others so that we can stop comparing ourselves to them. Because who God calls you to do to be, the writer that he is um, creating you to become is great all on its own. You don't have to try and be like somebody else. It's not going to work anyway. So um, you might as well stop trying. Um, the beauty about writing, the beauty about being in God's presence is he takes over. <laughs> he takes over and um, he... Um, he pours into us what he needs to bring out of us. You know, um, if 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 you've ever heard me um, go live before, you would know that when I first started writing, I felt like, um, God, you tricked me into writing because I thought I was writing to get a man. I thought I was writing to find my husband. OK, but what had happened was <laughs> I ended up um, uncovering that I had some broken places in me that I needed to heal from. You know, and um, 
I got healed during the course of writing um, those books. So um, <laughs> what I thought I was doing and what God was doing was two different things, you know, but in the end, he gets the glory because um, I am so glad that I was obedient. It was hard going through it, though. That's the one thing about kingdom writers. A lot of times when you write from um, your pain, you have to go through those emotions. You have to go through the um, process of healing and deliverance, you know, in order to give an accurate picture to um, those who will come behind you and read it. You have to go through it. You have to become the book. You will be the book <laughs> by the time you finish, you know. Um, so whatever it is that you think your story is, whatever it is that you think you've gone through, gone through, writing the book is going to show you another side of the story. Trust me. Trust me. You will see the other side. There's your side. There is your perception of the other people's side. And then there is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the word of truth. And he will show you the word of truth. And it may not coincide with your truth. <laughs> not 99.99% of the time, it is not going to coincide with your truth. I'm here to tell you, because what I thought <laughs> had happened and my reaction to what had happened and what God said actually happened and the reason were two totally different things, but perspective was the most important thing for my healing process. Yes, absolutely. It's like reliving it. You really do. You really relive it. But for me, Susan, it was like I was reliving it through a bird's eye view. It was like I was able to see it from another perspective looking down on it kind of it was kind of like an out of body experience for me you know um i was able to um see it from the viewpoint of the um uh, of god not really the other people um but of god you know um so that i could get through it and so that i could get past it and so that i could not continue to walk around like a because we can survive a lot of things, but still be victimized by it. You know, surviving and 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 thriving are two totally different things. Um, and you will learn that through writing um, and um, allowing God to speak in you and through you through your writing. So um, I'm excited about the books that are going to come out of you all. I'm excited about. Um, the revelation that he is going to give you all in these books. Um, so don't run from it. Don't continue to run from it. You can't run anyway. Once you know that you're supposed to write, he's not going to allow you to continue to run. You're going to be disobedient. And if you be disobedient, you're going to be miserable. I'm here to tell you. And life is too short to be miserable. It really is. So um, you might as well submit to it. OK, um, and I talk about that in the um, <laughs> off to a right start that um, in the beginning of off to a right start, there are four things that you must consider before you sit down to write. And one of those is um, submitting and being transparent. You have to be able to do that to write your story. Um, but that's our hour, you guys. Thank you all again for joining me. Please remember to share the broadcast. Please remember to leave your questions, your comments, and your concerns. Um, and also, don't forget to go and download your prayer. I may post it um, on Facebook so that you can click. Well, that's going to be a picture, so it won't be able to, uh, it won't be big like you need it to be. So go ahead and download it from the website as well. So thank you guys again for watching. Thank you for indulging in me. And I hope that you will. Um, this will be the spark of a beautiful relationship between yourself and God. And um, again, I can't wait to see the books that he is going to birth in you all. This is just the beginning, you guys. God is not a one hit wonder. You think you got one book. That's that's not. Mm -mm. You got more than one. God don't make one hit wonders. Nope.
So there's probably more than one. No, I guarantee you there's more than one in you. Okay. I thought I just had one. Then as soon as I finished the blink, the dot on the last page and said I was sending him to the editor, God gave me another book. So yeah, this is just the awakening, the foundation, the beginning. <laughs> there are there is more in you and to you. So um thank you all again. I can go on and on. So um be blessed. And remember that there is purpose in your pain. I will see you guys on next week. I forgot what I'm talking about next week, but um, I will see you on next week for another episode of Mindset Mondays. Good night.